Hi, good evening everyone. I know that you were looking for us at 5 30, but we had a little, you know, technical difficulty. But we are here and it is the effects of COVID-19 on the family, the blueprint. And this evening's topic is sexual abuse. Now today we have a very special young lady joining us this afternoon for the discussion right and this is candace king and she will be sharing her story with us this afternoon so i hope that you know everyone give their support everyone chip in and share their views and you know let us get through the covid 19 pandemic together as well as brave silence on sexual abuse When a child is used in any way for the sexual arousal of an adult or another child, whether through touching behaviors or non-touching behaviors, like exhibitionism or showing pornography, that child has been sexually abused. Sometimes the abuse is disguised as a game, and very often the abuser is a close family member or other supposedly trusted person. In any case, the trauma of sexual abuse has profound impacts on a child's development, psychologically, socially, and physically. Children who've been sexually abused will often behave differently than their peers. They may appear to space out or be hyperactive. They may have angry outbursts, frequent nightmares, learning problems, or knowledge of sex inappropriate to their age. While some victims will become withdrawn, others act aggressively or bully other children. Sometimes their behaviors become so troublesome that social service agencies or the police are called in. Studies show the prevalence of childhood sexual abuse to be between 30 to 40 percent for girls and 20 to 30 percent for boys. These children are traumatized during periods of their development essential to building healthy relationships, coping skills, and feelings of safety and self-worth. Sexual abuse can do considerable damage in these areas, damage that can last a lifetime if untreated. The ongoing effects can include post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, substance abuse, interpersonal issues, and pervasive feelings of insecurity, shame, and distrust. But there is hope. Whether the abuse is discovered by a caregiver right away or an adult survivor decides it's time to get help, specific therapies and treatment approaches can enable a victim of childhood sexual trauma to lead a full, satisfying, and healthy life. A child who is sexually abused needs reassurance that he is believed is not to blame and will be kept safe from further harm. For the adult survivor, treatment may include group and individual therapy, stress management training, education, and learning new coping skills. Regardless of when the abuse is recognized, please know that it is never too late to get help. The National Child Abuse Hotline can provide assistance by calling 1-800-4-A-CHILD. In the event of immediate danger, call 911. To learn more about childhood sexual trauma, visit the Information Center at carrierclinic.org. All right. So we just now showed a little video, you know, to get some information before we start today's program. Yes, yeah. so we want to welcome Candice. So Candice is Candice. Um, Candice is a mother of three, one boy and two girls, right? Um, she is a very dedicated and hardworking woman, I must say. Yes, yeah. so Candice, you can feel free to tell us a little bit more about yourself and then we'll get right into it. Yes, Candace. I think she got cut off there. All right, so that is Candace. She'll be joining us back shortly. And um, so we are talking about sexual abuse this evening. And sexual abuse is where, so it really starts from, you know, 
childhood. This is where someone will be abused sexually. It could be um, in the form of touching, right? Person's private parts or child's private part. It could be showing pornography. So it could be even having sexual intercourse in front of a child, right? So that's sexual exposure. Yes. And um, a lot of times, when persons are sexually abused, it is by someone that they know, someone that they trust. Yes, and when it is persons who are um, sexual, sexually abused, sometimes they don't know how to deal with it or who to go to, who to tell. Yes, and that's why we are having this discussion this evening so that persons can be aware of the signs and what you know to look for and you know what who to go to if it is they are being abused so now if you look at the bottom of the screen we have some numbers that you know a child can call a teacher if they don't know who to go to yeah so we have the children's authority we have the police of course the domestic violence hotline and child line as well all right so we have Candace back on the inside. So hi, Candice. Miss Candice, have a mic on mute. She needs no, on no, mute. No. <laughs> She's not hearing us clearly. I'm not hearing anything. Not hearing, you're supposed to be, Are you hearing me, um, Shamika? All right, so, um, Maybe you can like Candice come back in and sort that out. Yeah. All right. So, um, what? So we we are speaking about sexual abuse this evening. For those of you who are not joining in, right? And sexual abuse is where persons take, but we will say maybe take advantage of others or exploit others for their sexual pleasure. Right, so when persons commit sexual abuse, it is definitely not to the victim's pleasure. Yeah, and um, what happens is that, as we said, it can come in, it, sexual abuse can take place in many different forms. And it does not only happen to children, it does not only happen to girls, as we see these statistics just now, a lot of boys are also sexually abused and recently just last week we would have seen that a 53 year old caretaker would have been arrested because she sexually abused the child that she was taking care of right so this would have been someone that the young man trusted mm -hmm. the boy was 13 years old and he would have trusted this much more older woman that could have that could be his mother yeah or even grandmother in that case right so we have to be able to know the signs good afternoon helen all right so candace are you hearing us better now nice. yes i Nice. So, Candice, you can go ahead and tell us, you know, about yourself, and then you will get into you sharing your story. If you know somebody else, what would you say about yourself? Well, um, I am Candice. I'm 35 years old. I could be very shy at times, but once you get to know me, I'm more outspoken and stuff. And I don't really... Yes. It takes time for me to trust somebody. It just, it don't come easy. I have to take time to build like confidence to deal with somebody on a personal level. Yes. Right. So, um, Candace, now we want to, we know some persons, you know, they came on, they are looking forward to, I know it's very hard when it is you have been sexually abused and, you know, even sharing. So we want to thank you for, Saying, yes, I will share my story this evening to the people and give some words of encouragement and inspire those others who would have been victims of sexual abuse as well. Right. All right. So, Candice, can you tell us 
um, what it has happened, you know, when it has happened, when was that first time that, you know, you would have been touched, when you have, would have been violated? So you can tell um, us about that. You feel free to speak and express yourself. Well, the first time I was 14 years old, but it wasn't actually, it was a touch. And I, well, I didn't understand what was going on at the time, but I know it was wrong, so I fight and I run, like push off and I run away. Well, then I couldn't run too far because it was home, the incident that I took place. So eventually I came back home. Fast forward like some months, like months, when I became 14, it actually happened like when I was sleeping, the perpetrator forced himself on me while I was sleeping. So I woke up like in immense pain and like was in shock too because the person who was doing it, it was somebody who I truly loved and couldn't, you know, believe. So I was in so much shock at the time. I didn't know what to feel, what to say. I was just like numb. So yeah. at that time, it was more like tears. But I couldn't scream because I was being threatened while the act was being done. So I stood there. Well, I, well. I can't say I, 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 well, I allow it to happen because I was so weak from the shock. I didn't even know how to fight. Yeah. I yeah. just was like watching. I didn't even know how to say stop. I didn't know. All I could have do was just like cry at the time. But eventually he, he stopped. Like when he, he when he, he discharged, yeah. he was like, trying to tell me he loved me and don't let anybody know and and even self if I let anybody know he's going to hurt me and my siblings and my mother and stuff so with yeah. that I was like afraid well after the incident mm -hmm. well it's only brothers I have but yeah. the other day, because it was like, to pre be precise, it was like 2000, the year 2000, about nine o'clock at nine something in the night. And I, that was the first, first encounter. But in the other day, people had noticed, but they didn't show because I um, would have been crying and more in a corner to myself. Yeah. Well, when I go to school, people would have, friends and stuff would have noticed because I wasn't, I normally, I, wasn't wasn't good as, I was laugh loud and yeah. roll, I like to bed down and roll. So I used to, they said I was like, everybody was like, what happened? Why are your eyes so red? Why you're crying? And I used to say no. Even the teachers and they had asked and I was like nothing. Well, I would always be sleeping in the class. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like paying no attention. I was wondering if to like run away, but I know that wasn't an option. So eventually I went, I keep going home. I was frightened to talk for like over like say a period of six. Well, I say close to a year, I wasn't saying anything, but I was just keeping more to myself. But Within that year, it happened about eight other times. And mm. it's when oh. I got a similar incident like that happened. Incident like that happened to me again. And I was like, I cannot take this no more. I have to speak out. So when yeah. I seek for help, it was more like. The, the, the second incident was like rape and I become pregnant. So I seek to help, but deep down, I, I could have done. The option was to have abortion, but 
something deep. Even though I was young, I knew that it was wrong and I didn't feel something was beating like my conscience saying, don't do it. Even though yeah. the advice was to do it, I stood well. up to them and, and I didn't do it. It happened to me at other times. So for me at the time, yeah. I was wondering what was my problem for that to keep happening, happening to me now. But then yeah. eventually, like, and then it could have happened because my family members and they wasn't really putting down their foot oil, like, like protecting me in a sense. No, it's more like what's a secret, a family secret. Yeah, they, they were, were protecting to... the family rather than protecting you as a child. Because it seems like it was an embarrass embarrassment. So... They just didn't want to say but, anything. Yeah, I even went to police. Well, I had family members who took me to the police at the time, they were saying for me to forget it, to forgive is a family matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So eventually, I well, I got. A, I had the child by when I was fifteen. I made a child. The child. Well, I started to feel. Well, I had hope before. I, when I had the child, I wasn't. I wasn't like say strong or whatever, but after making the child, I know one thing I had known is that I had to make it because it wasn't just me. It was yeah. me and somebody else that I had yeah. to take care of. But even though at the time I felt for sure that like seeing him, holding him, even though I was young and stuff, and they were saying that I used to feel the love and the connection to him. So that's he used to have me going. Yeah. And that had <laughs> motivated me to become like a better person. But I really never had nobody to listen till like in recent time. In recent times until right. She me tells me um Counselor has talked to her now, mm -hmm. and she just guided me. The confidence started to improve. So, Shamika, thanks. Yes. So yes. So we, will take, short... we will let you take a little, little break because we know it's getting, you know, very, very emotional right now, right? So, we yeah. will take a little break and we will come back and we will continue to share. Yeah? It's the nine, nine, nine. Yeah. Girl, I want you rock that na na. Na 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 na. Rock that na na. Don't feel that way now. What people say now. Cause your body looking good at why you. We want to, yeah, so we want to welcome everyone who's joining us this evening. Um, it's the effects of COVID-19 on the family, the blueprint, and we are speaking about sexual abuse. And today we have a special person, which is Candice King, right, who you are seeing to the top of the screen. Yes, and um, so we want to thank everybody for joining in and giving her that support, right? Now, we know it's COVID-19, but... 
sexual abuse with a you know it's nothing new it's something that has been affecting many of our children many our even our great 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 i mean this is something that has been happening for a very long time and sometimes it, people think it as taboo not to speak so those of you who are just joining in candace you know she started sharing her story on sexual abuse and sexual abuse as a child not as an adult but as a child you know as a teen it would have been done by someone that she trusted and when you look back you would have seen that she also had a child as a result of rape now i want to say so candace was you know she was really sharing and i want to that's why i say you know she's a strong dedicated young woman a strong dedicated mother right now she had the option she had a choice whether it is you know she could have done an abortion but she chose not to do that she chose to have that child who is doing extremely well so candace we know that you're getting very emotional and it's coming closer to your son's body so i know it will be even more emotional for you right um so candace what i want to ask is what type of support how would you say the support system was in terms of in the society but by the authorities the police when it says you went to make the reports did you feel that you were supported by them that the police understood what was happening well at the time i think they had known it was like family thing friend mm -hmm. so it more was like embarrassing to me like it's like if you know somebody and <laughs> how to explain how you if you know somebody you wouldn't want like the secret to go out like it was an embarrassment so most of the times and if i do reach other people because i after i got fed up of it happening i started to speak out but most time people used to tell me to hush up but eventually i will meet like few people who will listen and try to assist in whatever way they could but yeah. i didn't think i got the support that i needed at the time so we're talking about family support i here. just learned i just learned how to cope and deal with it yeah so we're talking yeah. about family support um chica yeah yes yeah. so what I will say is to all mothers, all fathers, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, teachers. I mean, because, you know, Candice would have said her friends would have recognized that, you know, there was a change in her behavior. Mm -hmm. And when it is a child is being sexually abused, you will see a drastic change in behavior. If it is, they were very jolly. They were very in the interactive. They're taking part in activities. And then they stop, you're seeing that they are, you know, very sad. They are down. They are always crying. They are withdrawn. And, you know, the behavior has changed for the worse. You know that something is wrong. And that's why it is important to recognize when there's a, a change in a child's behavior. Sometimes we as adults don't pay any attention. We need to pay attention, be aware no see the changes right and when it says we see the changes in the early stages we are able to assist that child and get the necessary help for that child right so imagine candace being 13 going into 14 to 15 right she went through all this trauma this sexual trauma and it's only now she's actually really getting to speak out about it and you know receive that help and that guidance and that listening a when it could it could have been done so many years ago and this is what happened to a lot of our you know children sometimes they get lost in the system because they don't have that support and when family is saying hush don't say anything nobody should know what is going on because it would be a family member or relative or someone very close to the family that would have done this evil this harm to our child that is that is the beginning of it 
and we need to stop it. Jamaica. I don't know how best again to put it. We need to stop doing that. If it is a child, these speedy changes, and speak to that child. Sometimes they try because they are being threatened. They may not say anything, but it is our responsibility as adults mm -hmm. to take it upon ourselves when we see that change mm -hmm. to reach out to the child. And if it is you reach out, right, mm -hmm. then that child may be open enough to say, no, this is what happened. And they will be able to speak in confidence what about, and get the necessary help. What about the authorities holding the family members, all those who are involved, knowing with the knowledge that this happened to the individual? Shouldn't they be held accountable? Well, no, that's what no, that's what they do. They take it a little bit more seriously once they find out. If it mm -hmm. is in the home, mm -hmm. they find out that, okay, someone in the home, they are aware of the sexual abuse. They are also charged. Right. Because they withheld that information. Mm -hmm. It comes like they are, in, in, they, are, they are enabling it. They are encouraging that type of behavior. So they too... It come like they commit the act as well. Just as bullying, the city bystander is also a bully. It's the same in the case of sexual abuse. So um, I know that, you know, they in our country now, they try to bring about awareness. They will have videos. If it, you know, on these things, child abuse, child sexual abuse, and showing that sometimes adults, sometimes mothers, when it is in... You know, they're going through, they're having, the relationships are not 100%. And finally, they find that, okay, this man love me and this man taking care of me. They're getting that financial support. If the man who is providing that financial support yep. Yep. is raping their daughter, mm -hmm. they're going to tell the daughter, hush. Because yep. they don't want that support, that financial support to go. Yep. Right? And that is the problem. Right? Yep. We need to put our children first. Put yep. your children with. Yeah. Candice, what I can say, stay strong. And you know, the thing about it, you're strong because you went through all of this. Um, a child was born all of this and you stood your ground. Um, we know it has been painful. Even for boy children, it has been painful. But when a woman could come out and talk like this, um, Shemika, you could, you could uh, talk about this too, especially with young boys. Young boys are being abused. But they wouldn't come out and talk because they believe when they reach at a certain age, manhood, like yourself reaching a womanhood, they wouldn't talk. So they live with that kind of experience. And somewhere along the line, it brings out that kind of anger within them. Shamika? Yes. Yeah. So as I say, anger, mind. that's yeah. another thing. So Candice, tell us some of the feelings that you would have had after being sexually abused and how do you think you are dealing with it now mm. well i was angry sometimes mm. i would have just break down i don't i don't know if it was an uh, anxiety attack i was always watching everybody was like i was screening everybody as like going to do me something like this. For years, I had to anybody. I like had closed up so much that I started to like become a little hater. Mm -hmm. it, it was more like I was scared. That's just to see. Yeah. For many years, yeah. I had like, I didn't even like my own self. Like I could have looked in the mirror. Like now if I look mm -hmm. in the mirror, I could see something very beautiful before I was like, no, I was like, if you're watching me, I would think you know that I was abused, I felt dirty. I didn't felt worthy then. Yeah. I didn't felt worthy. Yes, yeah, so we will see that when it is someone is abused, it doesn't just affect them any now, you know, it affects any long term. Yep. And when it says a child is sexually abused and nothing is done to help that child in the early stages, mm -hmm. what will happen? You will find that person having challenges in relationships. Yeah. It will take them a while to trust. So you see trust. When that trust is broken by someone that you know you truly love, mm -hmm. someone that you think you know would have you know protected you, and they turned out to be the person that would have violated you in a way that is 
and there's no word to really express it, right? Um, it's very, very hard to trust anyone outside of your family. So it becomes uh, more challenging. And then when it is, you hold on to that, you hold on to that, when you hold on to that pain, right? So it's pain, it's anger, it's every, all the emotions that you could, it could be even denial too, because they can't even believe this person that you trust did this to you. So sometimes persons are in denial. So that's why so when they are in denial, they become quite withdrawn. Now, each person is a bit different, but there are some similarities in some of the behaviors. So now some persons, they, a child may become promiscuous. So some of these signs, if it is you're looking at a child and they are soiling themselves and it have nothing to do with potty training, they have been doing very well with their potty training. They know how to go to the washroom, but they are soiling themselves. That is a sign. You realize that they have a lot of abdominal pain that have nothing to do with anything. That is a sign. If it is a child you used to enjoy going by a relative or a friend or even, let us say, a community group and they are taking part in a club or whatever and you realize that the child's behavior changed and they no longer want to take part in that activity, that is a sign as well. So that's why we need to pay attention. If it is a child coming and it seems like they want to tell you something, but like they're frightened and they don't know how to say it, let them know, don't worry. When you can tell me any, let give them that reassurance that they can speak to you. And if anyone is threatening you, we will deal with it together. Right? Because we know that when anyone is threatened for that matter, it brings about a lot of fear. And a lot of times when persons may be threat, it may not be on your life and it will be on others that you love. So in Candace's case, you would have heard that she said the person would have threatened to harm her brothers, threatened to harm her mom, right? So sometimes that's what the person does. Or they will say nobody will believe you. So sometimes two persons are so close, they will say, no, you can't tell, no one will believe you because, and it's true, sometimes it is hard for persons to believe that this person will do this. But let me tell you something. Always trust the child first. And you see, once that child is comfortable and they can come to you, do not let that child feel like they cannot trust anyone because after they come to you, it doesn't mean that they're going to hold the information and move along with life. You know, you have to report it. You need to report it. Trust the child first. There are things, measures in place to know, okay, if it's really true, or if it's really that person, because sometimes what some tremor do, they may put the blame on someone else. They may say someone else committed the act, but it may not be exactly that person, right? But there are things to check to see if it is a child would have been sexually abused, right? And if it is a child comes, there are things in place. That's why I encourage anyone, if it is you are raped, you report one time so they can give you the drugs to make sure that you do not get any sexually transmitted infections to ensure that you do not become pregnant, especially if you are within the rich age to become pregnant. Mm -hmm. For guys, make sure. We know it is hard. We know that that is even more taboo for persons to speak about boys being raped. Mm -hmm. We know that is even, even much more challenging to speak yep. about, to come yep. out and say, I have been raped. But, right. but um, Chamika, we, we talk about mm -hmm. this happening for ages, especially in Trinidad, Tobago. We always say about sexual abuse in Tobago. In Trinidad, I remember years ago when I had to do some little sessions in one of the junior sect, a police officer and I, we had girls who would come to us and say they were sexually abused. But, but they trusted us, eh? Mm -hmm. They used to go to teachers. And right. the teachers used to tell them they're lying. So mm -hmm. they lived with that. And we were saying, why would the authorities, especially in a school, a student come to you, whether it's boy or girl, and said, my uncle interfered with me home, or this one, and they will brush that off. Now, I don't know how the laws is now in Trinidad, being away for so long. On your end of it as a social worker, when you reach the, the fact of these students talking about sexual abuse, 
in school to teachers let me is, let yeah. me say something right so mm. i could let me speak from my experience right if it is a child does come and reports that they were what they were sexual abuse in the home if it is the so they could come they come to me directly mm. or if it is they tell a teacher the teacher will come and you know let me know yeah and the principal know and then we take these steps so if it means giving that parent <clears> support <throat> and even go into the police station with them mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. i will do right, right? Yeah. so yes if it is a teacher it is the responsibility of an adult mm -hmm. if it is a child reports it you make you go to the relevant authority yeah if it is you need to lend the parent if it takes place in the home it is the the parent has to go with the child now if it is you understand the situation of the home if you know the dynamics of the home yeah. then you can go to the station yeah. and make a report with that child now in my case i work with children with this well persons with disabilities so i have young adults i have persons who are over the age of 18. Mm -hmm. but even though that's their chronological age that may not be their mental age mm -hmm. right so you still need to lend support there but now persons, because they are aware and because it, they are taking it more serious, they, it's not, it will still have cases where persons may not report, but now persons are taking it more serious and they right. are reporting the crime. Mm -hmm. Children are being more aware. So they are speaking out, yeah. right? And that's why you have this, it's called breaking the silence, mm -hmm. right? So now in COVID, it, because a lot of children would have been afraid to be at home. Because they don't know if it is someone, if it is they were being abused before and nothing was being done, they are going to be more scared because the abuser will have more opportunity. Yeah. They have more time. Mm. Right? So while each other would have felt safe in school, school may have been a safe haven where they didn't have that option no more. Now you're actually spending more time with the abuser. Right. And be... I, I don't know anyone personally like who would have been an abuser and why it is they would have actually no that's not true I just remembered so <laughs> what I'm going to say is <laughs> what I'm going to say is that mm -hmm. you don't know every time I really don't even understand why it is this person will do that mm -hmm. why it is going to especially at your own child or mm -hmm. a niece a nephew, it is very, very, very hard to understand why they will do something like this. Yes, no, up to, I don't think anybody could explain why. Mm -hmm. What it is, some person may say that is a pos that's possession, they are possessed. Some per person may say, well, they definitely don't know how to control themselves, yeah. right? Because it, it, to, do, to do this, I mean, in mm -hmm. mind, I don't know. Some person, when it is they are drunk as well, so some person, mm -hmm. when it is they substance abuse, drug abuse, mm -hmm. sometimes they do things and like they don't even know that they are doing it. Right. But that does not give, that is not an excuse to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, I want okay. persons to understand that. And that's why the abuser, so sometimes persons only focus on the victim getting help. Yeah. The perpetrator, the abuser, mm -hmm also needs to get help and sometimes when it says you trace back and you do the history and it start working with that person you realize they would have been abused themselves right so right in, so in Candice's be... case in mm -hmm. Candice's case seeing that um Candice, this is for you too seeing that now and she could answer that a child came out of this whole scenario now as a mother, how would you deal with your your child, knowing that you went through all of this, not in a normal um, state, but out of pain, hurt, anger? How would you deal with your son in that way now? Would you, or, or Chica, would it be advisable that somewhere along the line, later on down, she says something to her son or keep it as a secret all right so candace hear what we're going to go to a little break and when we come back we'll allow we'll let candace ex 
you know, say how it is she interacts with her children when it comes to things like matters like this. Yeah, it could be a good a short break. Yeah. So you're listening to the effects of COVID-19. Today we're talking sexual abuse and our guest is Candice all the way in Tobago. We're going to be right back uh, in the next two minutes. All right, guys, stay locked. Share the life. From one friend to another, it seems that something's been bothering you. If you've got a minute, maybe there's something that I can say or do. See, I realize... back on the inside yeah. so we back so back. yeah so you will see you know, when can they speak now you will see why i say candace is dedicated and a really strong mother so candace um can you share with the viewers um how have you told your son you know your experience have you told your children your experience well i have three children one is the oldest is 19 well, from his six and stuff, I started to tell him about good touch, bad touch. I will, but I was very protective. I wouldn't let him sleep over, stay with any and everybody. I was very protective, wow. but I would have always checked. Yeah. I would have always looked for signs that anything I would have always told him if something is happening to him, he could, um, tell me don't be afraid but eventually when he was like 15 years i put him sit down when i think he was ready to understand and i explained to him everything from like all the experience that i got from a child straight up i explained to him who did it to me i explained to him well every every everything well he was like in tears he watched me when well, we hugged. He cried, I cried. He asked a lot of questions because it's some of the people that come up is people that he loves too. So he was like, what so-and-so did? Wait. Then he was like, he started to understand. But being a teenage mother too, it was difficult like, like for training and stuff. So after that, it was very easy to train him because he had understand why I wanted him to to to, to do his schoolwork, why I wanted him to. Well, I was more behind him because I wanted to finish school, but I couldn't have finished because of my pregnancy and stuff. So I was dedicated to make sure that he got everything for school and make sure that he become educated so he didn't understand why i was like that until i told him my story and he was like he like promised me mommy i wouldn't give you any more trouble mommy i wouldn't um i will uh, I understand we are going through now so he was like totally changed he become more supportive we could talk about anything if something bother in him or if somebody what like most about it, if in somebody say um don't tell your mommy he will come and tell me he will say mommy he wouldn't tell me if he and somebody having a conversation he wouldn't tell me but the moment they say don't tell mommy he will say even as big as he, as he is he will come and say mommy they say don't say but i'm telling you eh? but i don't tell, don't let them know i know but i'm telling you everything they see so me and he have a good relationship i think by telling him it wouldn't occur mm -hmm. my two smaller daughters I, mm -hmm. I teach them about good touch bad touch mm -hmm. 
I even tell them, I will tell them things like, if somebody touch you in a bad way, you don't have to um, be afraid to talk. If I not around, you tell somebody till somebody listen. Mm -hmm. If they're trying to bribe you with something, still take it, take mm -hmm. it so they wouldn't hurt you because if you don't take it, they may try to hurt you. So I will be like, take it and still come and tell me. Right. And yeah. we will deal with it. So, so before we go to Verena, I just want to drop this one before Chica come back in. Now, the perpetrator, the father of your son, tell us a little bit about him. Has he ever apologized at all, at all, at all? No, but I, well, since the like 19 years, if I see him 19 times, that's plenty times. Wow. But when he was about 12, it was very hard to like see about him, like on my own. Mm -hmm. So I built up the courage and I went to the court mm -hmm. and I got a summons did, and I you went. Did right you did the right thing. Let's say you did the right and thing. And I yeah. went for him to mind to, yeah. to well, for the court to order him to mind the child. Well, at the time he was very well. He he uh, he said that when they asked him, well, I didn't say what he did to me or whatever. I just he, they let him swear. And he said he was the father, and they allowed him to to pay, but he never really paid. <laughs> <laughs> he will pay when I sign a warrant, mm -hmm. and then he may pay whenever. Up to this day, have thousands of thousands that he haven't paid, but I just trying to forget about it now and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. focus on Ch chica chica i want to ask you this question and um mm -hmm. because i listened to candace candace i want to say you are a real strong mother um in that situation going to court for maintenance and candace said she didn't mention what happened to her what transpired uh, i don't know if there was a reason for it but you think at that time it would have been appropriate if Candace said, you know, this is what happened to me and the courts might have take um, action, different action. Now, okay. let me say something, right? Mm -hmm. It is up to just as Candace made a choice to have her son. Yeah. It is her choice whether it is she wants him charged or not, if she wants him to. Because, I mean, taking somebody to the court, uh, I mean, after so many years, and then charging them for it, it may not have made a difference. You would just yeah. be basically, as I say, wasting taxpayers' money, mm. right? But it was her choice is showing that she had, as she said, she built up the courage mm -hmm. because she would have seen, even though under these, these circumstances of which her son was born, she still saw him as a blessing. She saw him as who? Yeah? So getting over that to some extent and we saying you know let me focus on you know even if i didn't get to finish school i have a son i will channel my energy in a positive way she now build that courage and say you know what i don't need the father doesn't need to go to jail he mm -hmm. can pay child support he can help mm -hmm. take care of this child right so it is up to the victim mm -hmm. right the person who would have been raped or abused to make that decision right Right. Right. Yeah. You any you could tell someone do this or do that. No, it is still up to the person. <coughs> still okay. up to the victim to decide right. what it is they would like to do. Right. So we want to say good evening to Verena. Verena <laughs> you're huh? late. Who? Hi, Verena good evening, late. everyone. Hi right? Verena. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry for being late. I've been doing a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, don't don't do tell us. <laughs> Right. In preparation so, for school on Monday, Mike. Okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> Verena, I know that you would have, you know, missed a, you know, some of what Candice said, but I know that you could, you know, look over and hear what she would have said, right? Um. Mm -hmm. So, Candice, I, we not, as I say, we're not going to be victims, but victors, right? So, Candice mm -hmm. is a victor, yes? And, you know, she has overcome, you know, the sexual abuse and she's, you know, getting the help that she needs, speaking out, and really t courageous because she had the courage to come out here and share her story this evening. 
right? So when you look at Candace, you can see there's still hope. We know there's no reason for this to happen to anyone. I say it have no reason. Nobody should experience this, right? But we know that a lot of children do experience sexual abuse. And even in the COVID time where they are home. And another thing, please, you know, as parents, we really, really need to speak to our children. Yep. Don't hide. Don't be afraid to talk about sex with your mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. Let it be age appropriate. Let them know. So kind of said, you know, she's teaching her daughters good mm -hmm. touch, bad touch, how mm -hmm. to deal with her situation. If some, because people don't just um, get into, let us say, the physical aspect of sex. They may not rape the child. Mm -hmm. One time, they may not become physical, but they may start with little touches or they may start with giving gifts so that the child will build trust and say, no, well, you keep this a secret. Mm -hmm. Anytime. So let your child know from the moment someone say, don't tell nobody. And you're feeling uncomfortable because anyone, you will feel uncomfortable. You will know that it is wrong. I think that's what no one needs here. That's within us to know that if somebody touches us in a particular way, as a child or as an adult as well, you will feel uncomfortable, right? You, as Candace used the word earlier, dirty, right? When people look at us, you wonder if it is, they know because, you know, people, the stalk sometimes, and depending on the culture, persons, they, they don't feel comfortable or they feel embarrassed and ashamed to say, this is what happened, right? So, um, Verena, this will be so. Verena, this is um my question. So, Verena, she would have been one of my past school teachers, right? So, Verena, you know the group that we work with, and so Mike was asking earlier what it is, um, teachers do, authorities, and so forth. So, Verena, as a teacher, a child comes to you and say that they are being sexually abused what you know would you do or what would you have done in that case right so sorry i had a little issue on muting my mic there but so in that case i am a teacher so i am i don't have the ex the knowledge to really give that student the guidance that they would need so as a teacher i would report it to the relevant authorities within the school so where i worked we had the school social worker which was miss james any issue pertaining to our students we report to miss james right and i think in the regular schools they have guidance counselors so you report those things to the guidance counselors and well you may want to tell the principal as well because she will be yeah. part of the the end that group that will deal with these yeah. situations so you yeah. don't take the matters into your own hands because you could impart some wrong information to the child mm -hmm. right so you have to put them to the relevant authorities yeah um speaking from a parent perspective though and let me let me just tell miss candace that she is a pillar of strength, you know, for coming up here, um, given that story. I, I know I didn't hear the entire thing, but I did hear a uh, part of it. And it, although it happened in your life, you, you grew from it and you taught your children through it. So, you know. Yes. So. Yeah. So, but um, as a parent of a child with a disability, it is sometimes very difficult for us to give the knowledge to our children. I try with my daughter. I try to little storytelling, same thing, good touch, bad touch. Um, don't accept things from anyone. And I, I, I tell all my kids, this, don't accept things from anyone. You need to take something, somebody offering you something, come and ask me or your daddy if you could take it. Yeah. You know, and well, you have your other trusted adults like granny and grandpa uncle and auntie and i tell them only immediate uncle and auntie so you know we my sisters and my brothers or um their dad sister and brother mm -hmm. right <laughs> so I, I try to keep it close yeah. but um 
for some sometimes children with disabilities don't understand the entire thing so mm -hmm. something may be happening to them and they may not understand that it's wrong mm -hmm. right so a little touch may pass a little thing and they think that that is okay or it's normal right so this is where you have to continuously so my in my case with my daughter i have to continuously reiterate this information to her so it should click if something happens if she feels bad and i keep telling her you know well you could talk to me about anything and we have conversations sometimes i don't understand what she's saying <laughs> but i still try to keep the the um communication open yeah trust you know yeah. trust yeah yeah because it's important yeah well done well done. Well yeah. done. Yeah. This is amazing. This is amazing, you know, Chica, because what we're doing here this evening, what you're doing here this evening with sexual abuse, this is a big thing. It's not just because I remember earlier today we were talking about sexual abuse in the job place also. So it's not just the children, the adults who also experience, as old as they are, sexual abuse in various ways. So this topic is something that should not be taken lightly, like every other topic that we discuss here on the effects of COVID. So when we have somebody like Candice, a woman like Candice coming out and talking, it's a continued start because I did the same thing in the UK where um, I spoke to a woman in Trinidad going through domestic abuse, sexual abuse, the whole thing. And she literally broke down live on here. And I had to ask to stop the show. For somebody like Candice to come out and talk now, I think women who have gone through what Candice have gone through, even if you don't want to come public, I mean, you are there, Shika, so people could contact you to talk to you, just as how Candice now trusts you. And I think this is what women have to understand. And men. Yeah, um, so some persons, it takes a while to build that trust in mm -hmm. order to come out and speak, right? All right, all right? And we can't, it's not a process that can be rushed. You can't say, okay, well, even if it's a child, you can't just say, okay, well, we're taking you to the a counselor or a therapist or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It will still remember the trust was already broken because, as I said earlier, when it is you are sexually abused by someone that you know, mm -hmm. it's by someone that you trust, and it is something that will be recurring, right? So trust would have been broken. So in order to speak out, some may be able, some may speak out faster than others, some may open up more than others, and deal with it a little, what, for want of a better word, a little faster, right? But we have to understand and trust the process and be open. And that's why it's very important that it's not any and everyone that you go to. Right. You don't just go to um, come, you know, just say, well, I went and talk to a friend Tom, about it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because here's what, right. Um, besides the child sexual abuse, there are persons in um, relationships, where it's a marital relationship, Mm -hmm. right intimate partner relationship there are persons who would experience whether it's man or woman being sexually abused in those relationships right so we have trini nikki who is also a social worker she's saying trust is an important part of social emotional development which is true so that's why we're saying if it is the person in charge trust was broken it may not be easy for anyone for that matter to just come out and speak about it Right, that takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of courage. Some persons maybe they look. Some person when it says they speak about it at times, what they tell everyone is because they are looking for help and they are not getting the help that they need, or they may have the length of time it took to get the help. They don't know how to express themselves. So in the case of like persons with disabilities, because of the technicalities, right? It's sometimes they don't know how to deal with it, so they just tell everyone, even though they may be getting the help that they need, because they don't know how to express themselves. So everyone will know. They don't know what to do. As I said, everyone react, respond, and behave 
differently. Some, as I said, some person may become, they may be engaging in all sorts of sexual activity because they don't know how to deal with it. And some persons, they don't want to have anything to do with sex at all. Yeah, so it have those two extremes. So some people are like, no, oh, how it is this person? Especially when it's a woman, it's like, hmm, how it is she running from man to man or from boy to boy so, and right? That's... And that's why we have to be careful. That's why it's important not to be judgmental because you do not know mm-hmm. what is the reason for that person behaving in that way. That's one right? of the now questions the person... I was going to ask you. That was one of the questions I was going to ask you. When it comes to women and relationships, I think that's one of the big things because of their abusive life. They may not want to come and talk. So every male individual they see, they may believe that if they get into that relationship with them, they may be abused also. That's, that's a very important um, line right there when it comes to women and relationships. Yeah, so, some, so it is very, very... You know, person may, as I said earlier, they may experience some of the things that are quite similar mm-hmm. and they may behave in ways that are quite different. Mm-hmm. Now, I was going to talk about the intimate partner relationships, marital mm-hmm. relationships. And person believe, how does someone could be sexual, sexually abused in those types of relationships? So mm-hmm. one, let us say, for example, you know, you want to engage in a sexual activity. What some persons may do is force so the partner may not want to engage in sexual activity at that point in time. And you literally force that person or the person do give in. And then you become very aggressive and you cause that person, you deliberately cause pain to them during the sexual encounter. That is sexual abuse. And it continues to do it. It really cause pain because your partner is not enjoying it. The partner is being hurt in the process. And you will, that is sexual abuse. Not using contraceptives, willing, will just not using it at all because they say, no, you have to either make a child or whatever the case is, or women may say, no, I want to have a child so they could keep the man, as they say. That is sexual abuse as well. Another thing that is sexual abuse is using toys or bringing another party into the sexual activity and the other partner did not give permission did not give consent to do that and he forced them to do something like that that is sexual abuse to engage in a certain act whatever activity while having sex that is also sexual abuse willingly infecting your partner with a sexually transmitted infection and you know you have it and it's doing it and you're coming and you're going back that is also sexual abuse, right? That is, it could be on either, it could be a man sexually abusing a woman or a woman sexually abusing a man, right? So when people think, no, that can't happen, please remember that men as well, boys, are also sexually abused. And it is harder for them to come out and speak about it because persons still like, Oh, oh. right so even when i have you know class with my students they'll be like oh that could happen yes it can happen so boys be aware as well be very vigilant be careful no it is not okay right and so we need to really as i said pay attention parents adults pay attention so Nikki is saying, I truly believe abuse victims in terms of laws of attraction most times attract a partner that most like mostly likely abuse them in some form. It is a hard cycle to break at times. Yes, yeah, so she's also saying in our culture it is seen as a macho thing rather yep. than abuse. Yep. Yeah. But what because yes, and you know, for the boys, when it is like 13, 14, and an older girl or even somebody in their 20s come at them they were like oh it get true right not understanding that that can be sex that is sexual abuse they may not understand because you know hormones they know that any moment they want to have you know they, they understand what's going on so it's like yes and it's an older woman and it's experience wait so now. they're feeling they're feeling big so wait now i'm proud about that, themselves my experience that 
No, All serious. Right, right. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Let's not joke. I really experienced that in in the U.S. with a woman who was much older than me. But at that time, I'm mm -hmm. not thinking, hey, she taking advantage. But now that you're talking about it, it's true. No, my if it is you a willing participant and you are over the age of eighteen. No, I was right. I was um twenty two. You were twenty two. Were you a willing participant? Not really, you know, because she, this was a married woman, who her husband was in the house too, and we were in the living room. So, why is that? No, Mike, if it is you who are willing participant, it would not have been rape or anything like that, eh? Right? Just, just making because, that clear. No, but as you said, sometimes things happen in that form. No, I didn't really participate, you know. I think because she was having issues in her marriage mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. and me being that vulnerable youth, even though I was 22, first time in the U.S., um, her husband was right in the next room. So, because during that conversation, she was talking about what her husband did, because he was a doctor, um, what he used to do with the females and them in work, like his secretaries and stuff. So, apparently, she had a use of that and looked to take revenge. So I probably was part of that. So you were you were, you are saying that you were raped. So you felt uncomfortable. I, and I mean, she because Mike I mean so that sometimes that's the other thing, right? Some persons don't if it is, let me say. <laughs> so Trini Nikki, you see we we ain't we listening to what is saying. And now Trini Nikki is saying, but he was a sexual side man, right? Because here's what, right? We have no. to be very careful yeah. of yeah. Mm -hmm. what it is. Because, I mean, some persons, they may be in a position, and that's the other thing. We have to be not saying it is okay for anyone to do anything, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we also have to take precautions to protect mm -hmm. ourselves in right. situations, right. right? So if it is... You said that you were sitting on the couch or whatever with the woman or whatever, mm -hmm. and you are feeling uncomfortable, right? People, it doesn't matter your age, if it is you uncomfortable, you evade. You move away from the environment so that nothing can go further. You realize you're feeling uncomfortable. Move away from the environment. No right, men? So, men, if it is you are wrong, a woman, and you are uncomfortable, you are 22 years young, right? But remember, 22, they call that adult. So when anybody who you're not having, you're not in an intimate partner relationship, but you're not married, no. No. that is rape. Mm -hmm. And they thought it is rape. Let us say the woman drug you, right? They, mm. You know, it's have women that do those things. So yeah. don't think that it's only men putting drugs and women and all these date rape drugs women do it as well mm -hmm. right so you need we need to be very careful of that but yeah, then so don't put do you yourself not think, in do you not think that in that scenario now you're talking about at the age of 22 in the u.s first time vulnerable in a situation where a woman is having issues with her husband who actually is in the house they don't sleep on the same bed um and at the the point on that time I wasn't even thinking about, hey, you know, I mean, I'm young. I need country for the mm -hmm. first time. No, I wasn't drunk. Um, to me at that time, mm -hmm. it was just a normal person, adult, mm -hmm. 22 years, mm -hmm. that just probably was experiencing... Um, right, so sometimes when persons are experiencing trouble, you know, they have little problems in a marriage, they may reach out to others right they may try they may be not feeling so sexy they're not feeling attractive but they may say okay somebody else she may say okay it's a young guy but what mm -hmm. i'm trying to get at if mike you were not feeling uncomfortable and you were allowing her to you know show you know they say women show themselves at men and you are allowing him giving you're giving her the energy to come forward and i say no calm down all right i understand the situation then it would then it means that you were like a willing participant yeah right right so you have to understand people you need to understand how to maintain a distance yeah yes yes nikki that's what we are saying women do it mm -hmm. but it's not reported women do abuse and i'm very 
this week when I saw that the child, that little boy was able to speak to his dad and say this caretaker touched me and she is charged, I was very happy to see that because women cannot be getting away with things like this. Mm -hmm. Right? No oh, one exactly. And that's why we need to speak out. Mm -hmm. Right? That's why we need to speak out. We need to teach our children. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be the pastor, the imam, the pundit, the uncle, the father, whoever, mother, whoever, sister, brother, mm -hmm. you report it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell yes? my kids, even if I touch your bad, tell me, you know, I just no. tell them because no, that's tell sometimes me, you might. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I said, no, tell the dad. <laughs> I said, tell your dad, and if your daddy touch your bad, come and tell me, you know, because yeah. sometimes you with your kids and you might not think. <laughs> You touching them in an inappropriate way, yeah, or yeah. you're playing, whatever, and they feel uncomfortable, and they must be able to, to say, okay, I didn't I like, like that how, touch, or, yeah. you mm. know? Correct. Mm. And but, I just try to be mindful. Let me ask you. Know, and people, let we, me say another something, right? Let me say something else. Mm -hmm. Parents, do not go and tell a child, go and hug uncle and kiss, <laughs> go and hug and kiss, they see the hug and, and kiss. Sit on on lap. Mm -hmm. And sit down and lap. And sit down and lap. That's a no no. It's a no no, and when it reach a child reach a certain, you need to study child can be themselves. It's not for that yellow and daddy to be the child, the daughter, and we need to be very careful because sometimes they think it's or they will start thinking that it's okay for persons to touch them in these places, and they may not understand when it is they wouldn't understand that this is wrong, right? So we need to start from early and the naming of very, the body parts too. Good. And yeah. the naming of the body parts because oh, sometimes if you go to make a report and you say, Well, he touched mom, cocoa looks, chocolate, not, not just it had a um, it had a story Chocolates. where um, a child knew her vagina's flowers and mef, she mef. told the teacher that daddy touched her flowers and the teacher said, Oh, that's so nice, not Mushy. knowing and that exactly is her vagina so, she's mm -hmm. talking about yes yeah, so you when know? it is so that's why now they're educating persons only different because remember still in the cultures they will not call it by call the private parts by the correct name yeah, i call so it we, i call it meth meth as teachers as social workers parents we need to know the other names yeah that people place for our vaginas and penises mef, mef. we need to know all whatever I could come up with, Biggie. right? And you and must be so able to ask means... what is a flower or what yeah. color your flower. Ask certain questions mm. to get more yeah. information. You know yes, exactly. Let me, let me um, right. Let me get back to Candice. Um, Chica could join in here. Now, I don't know Candice's status when it comes to relationship and thing at present, but let's say she's not in a relationship. And Candice, you wanted to get into a relationship with somebody, somebody you say like, or they like you, knowing that you have gone through that trauma. What would be some of the things you would say to that individual when you're in that relationship? Would Chica, is it right for her to say, to hide, or, you know, just keep it quiet? Right. So, Mike, as we said, like, last week, right, when it is you getting into a relationship, you remember you're building trust. They would not tell... Mm -hmm somebody that is now getting to know all of a business you don't do that right what? good thing i didn't know you don't people you good don't thing i didn't do tell that. you all my business i want to see right look today she's now learning about this she's now learning this. <laughs> right so trinity is saying that um she had a case where a child said another child who touched her vagina in the bathroom she called it her favorite play mm -hmm. right so i mean when you hear somebody say let us say somebody came in my favorite place. So somebody mm -hmm. went and touched my favorite place. Mm -hmm. I mean, that favorite place, you know, mm -hmm. what is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, we know. So Candice, I want to really thank you for yep. coming on today and yep. sharing with us. And I will continue to say that Candice is very strong. Mm -hmm. And she's very determined, she's dedicated, and, uh, you know, she has a very, very positive spirit, mm -hmm. yes? And I like the way that, you know, she approach life situation. Yeah. And how she, you know, approach and how she dealt with it as mm -hmm. a teenage mother. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And you know, sometimes we see, we know how dark and how the situation has, mm-hmm. <clears throat> like we say, heavy it could be, yeah. right? Yeah. But out of it, it could give others that hope that yeah. you can you can go on, you can yeah. survive. And you know, just this week, there would have been an article in the Express talk a mother speaking about her child who would have been killed. They don't even know who is the person who killed her daughter. And her daughter would have been raped at a very early age, mm-hmm. the age of eight, yeah. between six and eight years, and no, ju- did not get any justice. Right. right? And the mother was so frustrated because she did not get any justice. And she she attempted to burn down the police station that she was making the report to because she kept going what? and going. You understand? And she served three years in prison because she attempted mm-hmm. to burn down the police station because she was mm-hmm. very frustrated. She was angry because there's no justice. And now they're saying that they cannot even continue the case with the daughter who was raped by relatives because she's no longer alive. Right? Wow. So you see, sometimes when persons don't want to speak out, it's not they just don't want to speak out because there is, you know, they're not feeling too. Sometimes it's because of the experiences wow. they may have when it is they go to the justice system. Right. So, and it's time now right? to good. stop hiding yeah, because sometimes exactly. relatives are aware that X, Y, and Z has this particular behavior and they don't say anything. I know of a mother, her stepson raped her two daughters, right? Her two daughters were raped and they did not hold him accountable. What they did is they run him from the house to do what? Go and rape more people? He did not get help for whatever it is he needed help for, and the girls didn't get help. So that's two young ladies yeah. who were raped by their stepbrother, mm-hmm. and nothing is coming out of it. And the, mm-hmm. of course, that adds to the trauma of already being raped to see a rapist yeah. being free and not being wow. held accountable. Mm-hmm. And then he's out there and able to probably rape more people. You don't know if he would mm-hmm. change on his own or what it is he will do, you know? Trini, Trini so Niki. you need to hold people accountable and so report Trini, these yeah. crimes. So Trini Niki, I know you're hearing me. You and Shamika, a social worker, what would you like to see change in the law, guys, when it comes to this? No, I wouldn't say exactly is the law itself. What I will say is, is that when it is you go and report a crime, mm-hmm. now I am um, ex- from experience now, it seems start the idea with the matters you know a little bit you know quicker Expedited they are taking the matters quick. more yeah. seriously mm-hmm. and yeah. they uh um it depends and sometimes it depends on the speaker now sometimes the officers are not trained so that's why they now have like the child protection unit they have the children's authority they have more things in place they have the victim mm-hmm. and witness support mm-hmm. unit right mm-hmm. so it's all and sometimes it have to do the parents as well sometimes the line of questioning sometimes they don't know how to get the information yeah. and how yeah. to deal with the situation because sometimes yeah. they ask questions that sometimes is not even relevant yeah right it's not relevant yeah allow the person to speak and express themselves They're not trained. don't say not um and the other thing is there would have been a case where a young lady she reported sexual abuse and sometimes the officers turn around and further victimize yeah right that you know a woman right so we need so people what i have to say is that do not further victimize person do not cause more don't ask questions that you you don't need to know that particular like, did you enjoy it? no that is not a um that's not a question ah, not look, appropriate look 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 right? look 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 what look, you, you must change the way you dress what you yeah. mean, Nikki, is saying the way you're dressing facts. you look for that yeah and sometimes officers you know? tackle them yeah right so yeah. i said that i said that we need to think and sometimes you know we may say okay Think about how you'll feel if someone do this, to, you know, rape your daughter or sexually abuse your daughter. We you like that sometimes those saying those things aren't working out. So we need to hold ourselves accountable. We need to take control 
of our actions and our emotions and whatever else again we feel right and really have because when it is people you don't have control that is their problem you don't know how to control your sexual urges that is a serious problem learn how to control yourself that's a start hold yourself account you realize oh you can please don't rape nobody please mm. please don't go to the washroom and do some do not do it do not exposure people thinking that sexual abuse is only touching and actually engaging in sexual intercourse or bothering and yeah. no it's you know, also um, with exposure showing movies and porn yeah. to children that is sexual abuse yeah and um having sex in front sexual. of children with children in the room that is sexual abuse, abuse. yes right? and we that also have also. like when men tackle you on the streets you know Hey, dog, like you're looking so sweet and yeah, but, those things. But men you is see, gay too. Men is gay. Men, men. Yeah, men. So it is once I, I learned in a symposium I attended recently that to compliment someone, you first have to get permission to compliment them. And if it's, yeah. if you do not get the permission to compliment, then. Hey, listen. Look how serious it this is. It is a form look. of. No, there's a way, there is a way, right, to give a company. Not to, sometimes it's not what is said, you know, it's the way Bilak that it is said. Yeah. Right? Sometimes and then the response said, after. It's the way. It's the, the response way, after. Let's say. The way. I so so don't want the compliments. The justice and system I, for rape victims in Trinidad and Tobago is correct. extremely terrible. So yeah. sometimes it takes long to deal with the key and it is it is really really frustrating eh? right because yeah. when i read the weather mother where she threw she threw the gasoline and was lighting that police station <laughs> a fire i could understand mm -hmm. i could understand why she reached to that point mm -hmm. right so harassment and even the words that they say mm -hmm. things that they say um i wonder how how that thing is i wonder if a good boy Right? And talking about the person private part of what kind of sex if it is. Hmm. Um, that man might be that man if you well enjoy himself. Those things you don't that is no, it's a no no. That look, woman maybe. Well look, no. Ah, so look you have CEO. to be very, very, very careful. All right. So the CEO now writing something. Oh, that I'm so not she's going to saying my you. husband gets a winning market where guys were tackling me. Look, they need to have respect. Right? Oh, they have ways to compliment. Yeah, exactly. People, exactly. if it is how you can tell some, you look okay. Some people might say empress or queen, you're looking nice or sexy, whatever the case is. But it's the way they say and you look, it yep. is have a tone, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, um, correct. Nicola is saying they make the weirdest of decisions. I have a case going on where eventually a father who abused their children toddlerhood and the child remembers it like it was yesterday and he eventually went to court and got custody years after magistrates do this craziness so now is the child exposed to repeated Repeating abuse these. and that yeah. that is wrong how it is how is it that you're going to put the child back into the abuser's care that don't make sense and there was another case too of a child with a disability the mother would have been unable to really take care of a man in the system itself. Mm -hmm. The child was abused. People, mm -hmm. if you know you don't love the job, you don't want to take care of children, do not please do not go in the children's home. If it is, you have whatever it is, do not take your frustration out on a child. Right? Don't please, you know, really, you see that is why I say control is important. If it is, you have no control, you're going to do things. They're gonna hurt people continuously. But Chica, and uh, you need you... help. When it says you realize you're doing it, know that you need help. Something is wrong. So you of yourself need help. And that's another so... thing. So sometimes persons are helpful. Mm -hmm. Let us say the person is helped for the crime. There's yeah. no rehabilitation, and that is the problem with the system. Yeah. If there is not a rehabilitation process where it is the person can have that change. Yeah. Where they, they were an abuser before and now they understand, okay, what I did was wrong. Yeah. And they could maybe even ask for forgiveness and not do it again. No, they sometimes people, they have 
new kongs, a whole lot of cases upon them because they continue to do it, right? And persons, sometimes they abuse, they may even have a whole case built upon them and still they get away with it. So, right? Let's be so, it is not clear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the law is not very clear. It's not very just. Mm -hmm. One magistrate might do one thing, the next one will do the other thing. Right. Right? So, and they find whatever lines it might be first or no, it's how you see the first offense and second offense thing. Yeah. If it's whatever the case is, no one should have to go through that and persons yes. must pay for mm -hmm. the And get a bail. Yeah. You get a bail, bail for rape. No, it has no, no bail. It should Think not have bail for rape, sexual mm -hmm. abuse, mm -hmm. and physical abuse. I don't, whatever abuse. No mm -hmm. one should receive bail. You should get bail mm -hmm. for that. No. So do you not think... um Chica, I know mm -hmm. time is at hand. Do you not think most of these perpetrators are people who are abused also? Yes, yeah, so that's what I said earlier. In some cases, it would have been persons who would have been abused. It really? would have been persons really? who would have been exposed to it. Right. And then some, they, you don't even know what is the reason behind it. That's why I need to know. So it, it, it has so many different factors, right, that can cause a person to commit that crime mm -hmm. against another person mm -hmm. yeah it could have it have many different reasons so what i will say is so nicola i said when you go to make a report make sure they write it in the big book report book and make sure you get a receipt yes getting your receipt when you make a report in the station is very very important mm -hmm. you take your re you record your things your yes. your incidents as well and when you make a report, make sure you get that receipt and yeah. sometimes and not the just the receipt, don't like do get the police officer work. number, their badge number, get their name. Because yeah. a lot of the times people come back in the station, I can't remember who I gave the report to now. No, yeah. get yeah. this information. You need this no, information. So no, by so yeah, easy. what I will say, right? Sometimes, okay, depend on the situation or when it happens. Sometimes it's very, it can be hard to remember all those things at that point in time. Right to so remember, so okay, get the badge number, get the officer number because they remember in our state, so you may not remember, and that's why support is very yeah, important. Awesome. Support is very, very important. If you need to go with someone, so they might be of some mind, they may be in that mental state where they can't get all the other information that you, the victim, may not remember at that point in time, right? So that's why support is needed. Parents, please pay attention to your children. If it is they come and say, mommy, uncle, or auntie touch me, or whoever, somebody that they trust, please take the right steps. Make sure you take them to the make well, a report. I, and when they go to the station, they will know yeah. if things are moving or no. Yeah. They will go to they will take them to the hospital right. to test. They will make sure and do all the re relevant mm -hmm. checks. Right. right um so nicola said the social workers usually the one coming to make the report or a family member or school administrator mm -hmm. all depends who found out about the abuse so yeah so what so what i hear right. in here what i hear in here is very very um difficult uh, point to comprehend because now i may have to start making a lot of police reports right what are you talking about now? Well, the wife always abusing me, touching me, and all kind of things. All right, sometimes. we will not so, talk go any further. So, so we <laughs> want to thank everyone, right, for yeah. joining us this evening. We want to say, give a special, special, and um, we want to thank everyone to, for, you know, Candace. showing that support for Candace and yeah. giving words of encouragement. Well done, Candace. So, Candace, so Candace thank yeah. you. Thank you, Verena, yeah. as well, for sharing as a mother yeah. of a child with a disability, you know, how. You know, you deal with it. Yeah. And we want to just say thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. Great program. And feel free, you know, to, yes, the CMO have to conduct an assessment to know. So, yes, right. that's how, true. How, how would people get in contact with you, Chimika? All right. So, if it is, so right now we're on the page, there's a WhatsApp button. Right? When you click on the WhatsApp button, you get access to me. Right? Um, so the number is three four six eight mm -hmm. seven three zero. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So everybody is showing they're supposed to kind of thank you, thank you. Know you're courageous. It really took a lot of strength, and you know trust us well because I know because you know you trust us 
he had been team, he felt comfortable enough to share it with others as well. Yeah, yeah so thank you very, very much for sharing. And we hope that, you know, that person see this, you know, where, as you say, they say, where there's life, there's hope. Mm -hmm. And we know that Candace saw that she had life, not only her life, but the life of her son too. And she still, you know, she saw that as her life. So, you know, yeah. move forward. Yep. Right. So we remember when his birthday is coming. So wish him a very happy birthday. It's yeah, coming just, soon. Yeah. So oh, we want to oh, thank oh, everyone oh, again. Oh, oh, by the way, let me just wish my big daughter happy birthday mm -hmm. today. So yeah. today's your birthday. So Candice, right, so. um, when you see you and I come in Tobago, I want crab and dumpling, nothing else. <laughs> crab and dumpling. So guys, well done. Great show. Shamika, um, any early assessment that was going to be coming up next week, Saturday? Or you had a thing during the week? Mike, you will leave it. So thank you all. We will be continuing on the path of domestic violence. Right. So we really focus on sexual right. Good. abuse Good. this week. And we will, you know, either focus on either physical abuse, let's say physical abuse, next week. So we, didn't talk, we, we didn't talk about sexual abuse in the workplace, so would we talk about that next week? My that is sexual harassment. No, I'm going to talk about that in the workplace. Yes, that is sexual... not, no, that is not, um, we told, remember, we are speaking about the effects of COVID-19 on the family. Uh -huh. So when we get later down in the dread, we could talk about uh -huh. sexual harassment in the workplace and what rules. Okay. And what policies they have when it comes to sexual harassment yeah, okay. in the workplace. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we deal with the family. Right. So yes. we had a tackle the homes too, eh? Just remember we had a tackle the homes too, eh? Yes, all of that. Those yeah. are that is part of it. That's why I mentioned the young man with the disability who would have been placed in the care yeah. of you know the state homes and he yeah. would have been abused there as well. Okay. Right? And that's nice a whole so. different story. Well done. Well done. Yes. So well, thank man. you everyone for locking on and don't forget tomorrow if you want to relieve your stress, it's sweaty Sunday, seven AM. Yeah. So yeah. lock on yeah. tomorrow yeah. at seven AM for yeah. nice yeah. sweat. I, I go come and you watch. know how we just do it. Yeah. So yeah. people join us tomorrow morning. Come and see the big guys, Lion and Mike do their thing in the background while the ladies do their thing in the foreground so we'll be supporting the ladies tomorrow and i want to say well done again shamika out of jokes and stuff um, well done and um, as i said i really appreciate the fact that you were able to take on all of this being honest there's a lot of people as i said to you who will normally look at the show but they don't comment they will probably message yeah. me after all right mm -hmm. yeah well done well, what music of course. Who oh, shocks? All right. Yeah, you know, rest to live. So, yeah, guys, another powerful one. I want to thank Shamika James. Yeah, true love, we can find ourselves. And the topic today was. That you, I think. Thank you, all of you. Nice one. So, catch you next week. I think during the week, we probably might have a couple shows. So, it was effects of COVID 19 on the family, the blueprint. So we're going to catch you guys tomorrow morning. Have a good one. Have a good rest. Everyone. Love in the house. We gone. From Basic Unconventional Raw Nutrition, inviting you to Swati Soka Sunday with your girl Chika J. You don't know.